What's going on, party people? You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports, and I'm Mitchell Renz with the mustache. Today's show, I'm going to give you the latest news, rumors, but make sure you watch until the very end because there's some rule proposals that you need to see. But first, let's dive into the latest around Aaron Rodgers, or maybe my twin. So Rodgers today spoke for the very first time since the Packers traded up to draft Jordan Love number 26 overall. I think we could all agree, you guys watched our live coverage here because, you know, we were number one, humble brag. And we were all very surprised that the Packers traded up to go get Jordan Love. Now, I think that when Aaron Rodgers spoke about this, he kind of said exactly what everyone expected him to say. Was he thrilled? Not really. Was he surprised? Yes. But he did mention that he is excited to work with Jordan Love. Now, he also goes on to say that Jordan didn't pick to be with the Packers. The Packers wanted them, and he would basically never wish anything bad on a young player trying to start their NFL career, which is all the correct things you need to say. But I also know Aaron Rodgers. I also know he's a competitor, and nobody and nobody wants to lose their job to anyone. And if you do want to lose your job to somebody, I'm really going to question why you're either in the NFL or why you're even working. But when you do look at the numbers from Jordan Love, right, there is some reason why this Packers team did trade up for him. Because in 2018, he was legit. Now, he did have a little bit of a regression, and, you know, that's going to happen here and there. But the real story here is how Aaron Rodgers reacted to the Packers trading up and getting Love. So here's his exact quote. The general reaction at first was a surprise. Like many people, not going to say I was thrilled by the pick necessarily, but I understand the organization is nothing thinking just about the present, but the future, and I respect that. He also then said this, Jordan Love didn't ask to be drafted by the Packers. He did not. He's not to blame at all. I had a good conversation with him the day after the draft, and I'm excited to work with him. If you're the Green Bay Packers, that's a major win. If you're Jordan Love, that's a major win. Because whether you want to learn behind Aaron Rodgers or not, or whether he wants to teach him or not, Jordan Love is going to be able to learn a lot behind, I would say, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. So if you want to get to know me, if you want to get to know Tom, that's why we do these shows. We are an interactive YouTube channel. So I appreciate when y'all watch my shows that you interact with me on social media. So hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRenz365. And if you see anything about this video that you have a question about, DM me. Again, it's at MitchellRenz365. Let's now go to the next rumor. Matthew Stafford is on the move. No, he is. He is. He's actually on the move him and his wife they are selling their house in detroit michigan and it's up for 6.5 million if anybody here watching wants to put in some money we can get a sick airbnb but i think it's funny when x player moves that they're like he's just gonna get traded the lions are moving on from him now, the lions literally like can't move on from matthew stafford it costs the lions more money to trade him than to have him on the team so trading away stafford makes literally zero sense why does it also make zero sense? If Matt Patricia wants to keep his job, you better keep the best player on your offense. That's Matthew Stafford. Now, I've been a person that has ripped Stafford before. I totally have. But I have him right now as one of my top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. And before his back injury last season, the dude was on pace to have an MVP type season. Like I'm talking MVP type numbers. So that's halfway through the year. 19 touchdowns, five interceptions. That's close to 40 touchdowns and close to 5,000 yards. He was carrying this team. He really was. And yes, they had a rough year. Yes, they went 3-12. and 12. But I mean, just because the man's selling his house doesn't mean anything. So here's the quote from Stafford's wife on the moving. No speculation is needed. We're about to have our fourth child. I personally do not want to live on a lake or have a pool with four children under the age of a little over three. First off, it's a beautiful home. I don't have any children that I know of, but I could not agree with Mrs. Stafford anymore. If you had four kids, I probably wouldn't want to live near the water. I probably wouldn't want to live near a pool. But you do have plenty of money to go get a nanny. So, but hey, Stafford, if you need help picking a home, I know some people. Now, we just talked about two quarterbacks out of the north. Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video because both of these quarterbacks have been in trade rumors for, well, the, the last year, basically. So if you think Matthew Stafford, type MS. If you think Aaron Rodgers is going to be more likely to be traded, I want you to type AR. 
Let's keep the show rolling here, and I'm going to try to not be so jokingly like I kind of am because we do have some serious news to cover. DeAndre Baker, Quentin Dunbar, they found themselves in a little bit of trouble. Arrest, arrest warrants have been issued for the NFL defensive backs for an alleged armed robbery. So per the police report, Baker took money and watches from the victims and with force and was armed with a semi-automatic firearm, Dunbar was just assisting Baker in taking the money and valuables from the attendees at a party. Now, DeAndre Baker, young player, okay, could be facing up to 15 years in prison and I might be unpopular for saying this, I actually feel bad for him. I feel bad for him and Dunbar that they are making these type of decisions and I actually like pray for players like this that I don't understand why we're making decisions like this. But the Giants, they've already come out and said that they don't quite know what they're going to do yet with Baker. I don't know if I agree with that decision making. I also don't know what the Seattle Seahawks are going to do with both of these players because if there is one thing I've learned from covering the NFL is if you're a good football player, unfortunately sometimes the NFL does kind of look past certain things and Dunbar and Baker are both very good. Now, when I looked at some of the things that Baker apparently is believing they're taking, there's like three things, okay? You got a Rolex, 18K. A hut blot, I don't know what that is, 25K. And then also $7,000 in cash. I mean, when you look at the story here, it is very, very sad. And I don't really think there's any way other to put it. If anything else does happen, if anything else does break on this story, I promise you, here at Chat Sports, we will keep you as up-to-date as humanly possible. That's our job. But Baker Dunbar, get your head straight. Come on. All right. Also, I want everyone to realize that uh, if we do want to watch NFL football games this year, if you do want to go to tailgates, I'm trying to hook you up with this deal. You can get three face masks for $24.99 by going to chatsports.com slash stay safe. Now, I do want to give you all a round of applause because these things have been flying off the shelves. And... We were kind of told that they might not have them for much longer because of how quick they've been going. So if you want to rep your favorite team, if you want a cool looking face mask, believe me, I don't really want to do it either. But if this is what I got to do to watch football games, I'm going to do it. So do your part. Get the mask before they're all gone. It'll be in the comments. It'll be in the description. That guy, producer Dylan, wearing the Steelers one. Speaking of the Steelers, let's now go to James Harrison here is the next story on NFL Daily. So James Harrison says that Steelers Mike Tomlin never had a bounty scandal. I don't know if you guys saw this story, but a day after his comments went viral, Steelers linebacker James Harrison Friday clarified that coach Mike Tomlin never paid him for a 2010 helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Cleveland Browns receiver Muhammad Masakwa and that there wasn't a bounty system. Now, when I look at this quote, Harrison kind of got mad on Instagram, but when I look at this quote, it, it does make me see why people would think that. So he was on a podcast and he said, the g thing Mike Tomlin ever did, he handed me an envelope after that hit on Masakwa, and I'm not going to say what, but he handed me an envelope after that. So basically he's saying like, he handed me something, but I'm not going to tell you what was in the envelope. I don't know about you, it does seem a little bit fishy to me. Now, I like James Harrison. He was a player, y'all know I grew up in PA, that I know a lot of people idolized. A very good football player. And also, Rooney had this to say about his response to Harrison because obviously, the Steelers organization has a lot of respect for him. I am very certain nothing like this has ever happened. I have no idea why James would have made a comment like this, but there is simply no basis for believing anything like that. Now, I've seen St Stephen A. Smith react to this. I've seen multiple people on ESPN react to this. And honestly, I'm getting kind of sick and tired of A story, Stephen A. Smith just absolutely losing his cool. I think what happened here was Harrison just kind of spoke out of context a little bit and I think was like, wait a minute, that's not what I meant. I do it every day. Believe me, I understand where Harrison's coming from. But bottom line is, if you need to stay up to date on the latest news, rumors, I don't want you to get it from just people who are putting out bad content. Get it here at Chat Sports. We're 100% free. We're interactive. So go ahead, hit that sub button, and turn on the notifications so you know every single time that you get a video. Now, I promised you at the beginning of the show that there could be some rule changes, and I just want you to stick with me and let me talk through this. So the owners to vote on a res resolution to incentivize a minority head coach and GM hires. So during a State of the League address about 
three months ago at Super Bowl 54 in Miami. Roger Goodell said that there needs to be an increase for opportunities for minorities to become head coaches and general managers. Okay, So if the resolution were to be voted on by league policy, basically there's going to be some rules that are going to be changing. This could happen as early as Tuesday during the owner's meeting okay so I'm gonna walk you through here some of the things that can happen via draft and then I'm also gonna walk you through a little bit later on on what's gonna happen and the impact for the Rooney rule so let's first though let's talk about the draft okay so second year minority head coach okay equals six spots in round three what does that mean if a team hires a minority head coach that team would be able to move up six spots in the third round of the draft following the coach's first season makes sense NFL, if a team hires a minority head coach at the team in the draft proceedings, no? Next one. Okay, minority general manager, 10 spots. A team would jump 10 spots under the same scenario for hiring a person of color as its primary football executive, a.k.a. what we call a general manager. Let's go to the next one now, okay? Minority GM plus coach equals 16 spots in round three. What does that mean? If a team were to fill both positions with diverse candidates in the same year, that club could jump 16 spots. Six for the coach, 10 for the GM, and potentially move from the top of the third round to the middle of the second round. Let's now take this to the very last thing here for the NFL draft and how it could impact it. Third year coach slash GM equals five spots in the fourth round. This is another incentive, okay? A team's fourth round pick would climb five spots in the draft preceding the coach's or GM's third year if he is still with the team. So it's not just hiring a coach, you're also going to be rewarded for keeping that coach around, okay? So, but that's just how it impacts the draft. Now I'm gonna dive into another layer because for those of you that don't know, there is already a rule out there, it's called the Rooney Rule, where for NFL teams, you do have to at least interview a minority head coach. This now could actually jump up to two players or two coaches that you'd have to interview. But also, they really make it a point in the article that I read that they're trying to get a concentration on getting more OC and quarterback coaches as well as minorities. Why? The NFL is transitioning to an offensive league, and a lot of quarterback coaches and a lot of offensive coordinators are getting head coaching jobs. And right now, there are only four minority offensive coordinators and quarterback coaches in the NFL. You got Eric Bieniemy, Byron Leftwich, Pep Hamilton, and Marcus Brady. Bottom line is, it would not surprise me if you start seeing some of these rules be implemented. And again, this conversation could start as early as Tuesday this week at the owners' meetings. So let me know. That's what Chat Sports is about. Thoughts on the rule proposal? Do you like it? Type L. Do you dislike it? Type D. Bottom line, I want you to give me your opinion in the comments section.